Yes, good morning, students. Today we are going to start the chapter My Childhood. And before we start reading or before we discuss what this chapter is all about, first I would like to have a look at this video come audio clipping of My Childhood to see whether what it's all about. Here is the summary of the story My Childhood by APJ Abdul Kalam. APJ Abdul Kalam narrates the story of his childhood in first person. Kalam was born in the town of Rameshwaram in Madras, now known as Chennai. Kalam fondly remembers his father, Jainul Abdeen, and mother, Ashiyamma. Through his parents, he inherited the qualities of honesty, self-disciple, and faith in goodness and kindness. Kalam, short with undistinguished looks, lived in his ancestral home, which was built in the 19th century. When he was eight years old, the Second World War began. India, as a part of the British Empire, was forced to join the war. As a result, there was a curious demand for tamarind seeds. Though Kalam found it strange, Kalam would collect and sell them in the market. Due to war, trains were also forbidden to stop at Rameshwaram. As a result, newspapers, which came from other parts of the state, were thrown out in bundles out of moving trains. Kalam was employed by his brother to assist him in catching these newspaper bundles. Kalam, years later, recollects the pride he felt on earning money for the first time. As a young boy, he had three close friends. Ramanadha Shastri, Aravindam and Shiva Prakasan. Though the three boys were from orthodox Hindu Brahmin families, all four of them were very good friends. Ramanadha Shastri's father was a priest in the temple for whom Kalam's family would arrange boats during the Sri Sita Ram Kalyanam ceremony. Kalam grew up listening to stories from the life of the prophet and the Ramayan, thus reflecting the secular nature of his upbringing. However, this outlook was challenged when a new teacher joined Rameshwaram Elementary School. Kalam usually sat with his friend Ramanada Shastri. The teacher, shocked to see a Muslim boy was sitting next to a Hindu boy, made Kalam sit at the back of the class. Kalam still remembers the tears on Shastri's face as he took his place at the back of the class. Both the boys went home and narrated the incident to their respective parents. The next day, Shastri's father called the teacher. In the presence of the boys, he sternly told the teacher not to spread ideas of communal intolerance and social inequality among children. Then, he told the teacher to either apologize or quit. Through this incident, Kalam narrates how adults have the power to influence children either in principles of open-mindedness or communal hatred. Kalam then narrates another incident of communal injustice. His science teacher, Shiva Subramanya Ayer, had a modern outlook. He tried his best to mix people from different backgrounds. He was instrumental in building Kalam's early education. One day, he invited Kalam over to his house. His very conservative wife, however, refused to let Kalam enter her kitchen or serve him food. His teacher did not say anything. Instead, he served Kalam his meal. Then, he invited Kalam over again. On noticing Kalam's hesitation, Ayya reassured him. He told Kalam that when one decides to change the system, one must face obstacles along the way. The next time Kalam went to Ayer's house, Ayer's wife served him food in her kitchen. The Second World War was now over. India, under the leadership of Gandhiji, was moving towards freedom from the British rule. At this time, Kalam decided to go to Ramanathapuram to pursue his higher education. The optimism of the country was mirrored in Kalam's optimism for his future. When he told his father, his father agreed. On noticing his mother's hesitation, his father consoled her. He believed that there comes a time when parents must let their children pursue their dreams.
Yes, children. So this was, uh, you know, the crux of my childhood. And this my childhood has been taken from Abdul Kalam's Wings of Fire. Abdul Kalam wrote his biography, autobiography, and that autobiography's name is Wings of Fire. One of the finest autobiographies written by uh, a statesman, a scientist, an educator, a philosopher, uh, and the one who broke all barriers related to religion, caste, or creed. Today, if we talk about Abdul Kalam, you know, uh, then uh, if we talk about somebody who is not remembered because of his religion or because of his color or caste or appearance, that is Abdul Kalam. Because he was the one who, uh, you know, broke all barriers with his own education, with his scientific bent of mind. And uh, despite the fact like he belonged to a very, very uh, middle, uh, middle class family, okay, uh, he was able to come up, come up in his life just because of his, you know, uh, education, just because of his scientific bent of mind or just because of his philosophic bent of mind. So, uh, so Abdul Kalam is one of the gems of India and it's very, very important to know like what went into the making of this kind of great person or great personality of which, which belongs to the world, not only this India. So what kind of childhood he had? So right now you people uh, had a little, you know, insight into his childhood. So you people might have been able to make out like what were the most dominating uh, factors which affected his childhood, which made him become a great person later on. So what do you think were the great aspects of his life? Can anyone tell me? The biggest, the biggest thing which affected his childhood was, come on, raise hand if you know. Yes. My question is, what do you think was the biggest factor which affected child, uh, which affected Abdul Kalam's childhood and which helped him become a great person? What was that great quality? Come on. Yes. Very strange. Okay, keep this question in mind. I want the answer to this question when you will be reading the text. Uh, yes, uh, there is somebody who is sending the message, discrimination against the religion. Yeah, he was the one who did not bother about the religion. Yes. That his parents always supported him, Navnur says. Navnur says that his parents always supported him. So that made him become great. Okay, Harshit Bedi says that uh, discrimination, he was secular. Gaurav says, very good. I wanted to listen to this word, secularism. Abdul Kalam, you know, he uh, was the one who believed in secularism. And the only person, uh, the one whom we remember because of his achievements, because of his scientific base or because of his philosophies or because of his, you know, uh, literary sense of mind is Abdul Kalam. Okay, Abdul Kalam is uh, beyond religion. He's beyond any color or caste or creed, right? So that kind of person he became, and that is the reason that he became such a great person, such an iconic person, right? And the reason for which he, for uh, his being like this was the was his childhood, which which was. Uh, in very secular atmosphere, okay? So anyone whosoever tried to uh, sow the seeds of communalism, that person was sent out. That person was taught a lesson maybe by his father or maybe by his some other teacher, right? So yes, supportive parents, uh, uh, children's parents usually support their children, okay? Uh, 
but sometimes children are not able to make out like whether the parents are supporting them or not okay so parents always support their children most 99% of the times so many a times it is child's own intelligence also which makes him or makes him understand whether he is being supported by parents or not okay when you want to do something in life you will be able to do then uh, no one's pressure no no one's you know support or lack of support it will never affect you you will be you know support you will be you know able to get what you want okay so now let's read the chapter yes so when now we'll start reading the chapter my childhood can you think of any scientist who have also been statesman yes can you think of any scientist who have also been the statesman come on yes it was abdul kalam so apj abdul kalam whose projects in space defense and nuclear technology guided india into the 21st century became our 11th president in 2002 so the one who was a great scientist the one whose projects in space defense and nuclear technology you know made india become a super power so that person also became a became the president of india in 2002 so in his autobiography wings of fire he speaks of his childhood so this chapter my childhood is an extract from wings of fire so those uh, i would recommend you all to go for the complete reading of wings of fire uh, right take it as your reading project and uh, take one month otherwise it will take one week for you people to read the wings of fire but even then i am giving you one week you can read this wings of fire okay we'll talk about this book after one month uh so abdul kalam says it's in the first person as you people already know so here i is abdul kalam he says i was born into a middle class tamil family in the island town of rameshwaram in the erstwhile madras state so what is erstwhile i like former earlier this very madras was used to be called as chennai so he was born in the island town of rameshwaram right my father janalu uh, bidin but uh, had neither much formal education nor much wealth despite these disadvantages he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit so what does it mean Abdul Kalam very clearly mentioned that his uh, mentions that his father was neither very highly educated uh, nor was he a very wealthy person. What it? So Abdul Kalam, the one who became such a great scientist, the one who even rose up to the uh, status of the president of India, that person's father was neither. very educated nor was he a wealthy man right he had an ideal helpmate in my mother ashyama i do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day but i am quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our own family put together so though we we come to know that with uh, abdul kalam's family was not very rich uh, yet we get to know we come to know that abdul kalam's family used to feed more outsiders than the insiders got it so they would share food with so many people around so before they would eat they would share food so what is this if you want to share 
you need not be rich you should just have a large heart right you should be just generous i was one of many children a short boy with rather undistinguished looks born to tall and handsome parents so as you all know how abdul kalam is no uh, was not very handsome to look at appearance wise he was not very handsome to look at he was short and uh, and he had rather undistinguished looks like you cannot say like yes he was a, he, he had very good features he had very good eyes or he had very good you know appearance but as we all know that handsome is he who handsome does but abdul kalam is uh, respected more than any more than even the most handsome person of the world okay the kind of respect the kind of accolades the kinds of awards the kinds of you know recognition abdul kalam has got that is beyond the most handsome people of the world also okay yesterday also we were discussing the same thing when we were reading with the chapter the snake and the mirror there also we got to know that the appearances are deceptive okay because of your good appearance you may affect you may attract somebody for the time being but in the end it is your innate self it is in the end your uh, achievements your qualities of head and heart which will make you a winsome person okay otherwise no one will even look at you even if you are the most beautiful person of the world you must have the qualities got it so he says that uh, i was one of many children a short boy with rather undistinguished looks born to tall and handsome parents so his parents were tall and handsome we lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century so they lived in a house which was built in the middle of the 19th century it was a fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick on the mosque street in rameshwara so this was the location of the house my austere father what is austere simple strict and severe so austere is somebody who lives a simple life but has a strict disposition but is strict why is one strict when you be when you people say that uh, my father is very strict or my this teacher is very strict what do you mean by this being strict the strict person is the one who believes in discipline is that clear and it's always a simple people who can be disciplined right so being simple and being disciplined are synonymous so his father used to avoid all in essential comforts and luxuries so his father was never the one who would uh, you know uh, uh, go for in essential luxuries or comforts so this is what children when we are reading like when we want to know like what went into the making of this great personality abdul kalam this is one of the most important clue to understand Abdul Kalam's childhood was not spent in luxuries or comforts so the children those who are provided with all luxuries all comforts they very rarely uh, achieve the heights of glory very rarely i don't say that uh, it's always okay some children despite the fact like they've got all luxuries and comforts they are steadfast they keep on working hard as much they have to do right it's it's not an like a, it's not a rule that a, a comfortable life and luxurious life doesn't make you great it's not so but there are times when we have seen that comfortable and luxurious life sometimes really spoils the children got it so sometimes the comfortable life and luxurious life uh makes children get distracted okay for example the example is with us only right now you people have got a very comfortable life you people are sitting at your own home maybe you many of you are sitting in your air conditioned rooms okay 
and many of your mothers might have kept your favorite pranthas along with you right and uh, your favorite drinks might be there in front of you so many of you like turn off your video and camera uh, why can you go and uh, have fun ar around okay many of you keep on chatting with each other so very comfortable and uh, many of you might be lying on the bed and listening to me so many of you might be lying on your couch and listening to me because you people are uh, making the most of your comforts and luxury right but many of you in the class despite be sitting in a in an air conditioned room despite the fact like you people have got all the luxuries those children are sitting in a very disciplined manner in front of their device on a table and a chair with a pen and paper in their hand right so it's not that luxuries and comforts distract you always but it depends like what kind of person you are right or the kind of family you have got okay if you people have got a very pampering mother or very pampering parents then if you get distracted then nothing wrong about it right if your parents are providing you with pranthas and all during your class then it's not your fault only right maybe somewhere or the other somebody else is also to be blamed so your comforts and luxuries are distracting you when you are weak but when you are disciplined then you can make the most of what you are doing so children time is almost over i guess 5 minutes are over so we can leave the class now right so tomorrow we'll continue from paragraph number 2